Okay, so I'm working on the Sigillum Dei Ameth for a friend, and I figured now would be as good a time as any to talk about my process for making it. I've made several of these over the years, probably maybe not quite 10, but close to it. Um, so yeah, so I'm making this for a friend, and I'm just figured now would be as good a time in it as any to talk about what it is and um, how it kind of connects to the uh, other parts of the Enochian system. I'll try to keep this kind of brief, but who knows, this will probably run long knowing so, me. So first a little bit on the um, uh, sigillum itself. So you'll notice here if you're if you're really big into Enochian, so here usually is where the actual English slash Latin letters are. Um, everything from the heptagons in, I've gone ahead and changed to Enochian uh, letters. And actually this one, the uh, angel name L, I've actually combined into a single glyph, beca partly because um, the uh, High King Karmara, Angelic King Karmara, he used a combination of the letter E and the letter L in English letters, and so I decided, well, if I'm going to do the angel name for that, um, he, he used that as part of his, his seal, I should say. But I figured, well, if I'm going to do Enochian letters and I'm going to use the angel name L, E, L, then I'll just go ahead and combine it into a single glyph, and the angel said that was fine. So just a couple of quick things on this. Um, you'll notice here, right up top is the T4, so, or the 4T cell, I should say. So the number four is above the letter T. And just briefly, the way that um, the names on the... Uh, these seals, they're all like really interconnected. This is a lot like a big safe cracker dial. So, but I'm gonna start with, with just drawing your attention to a few things. So this four over the number T, this actually relates to the, um, to the Eastern tablet of the watchtowers, which has as its glyph above it, the letter T with four flames above it, okay? So, Another thing that I wanted to mention is that this plus sign, it actually appears, let me see, it appears within the, um, within one of the four tablets. I believe it's the Western tablet, or no, I think it might be the Eastern tablet. At any rate, it's sort of the culmination of these things. So you see this repeated here and here in the Sigillum Dei Ameth. So, if you, th if you think that the different parts of the system are, are detached from each other, that's incorrect. So I'm just, I'm just telling you flat out that's not the case. So, so I'm going to try to keep this more of an overview rather than getting into the whole thing. But um, you can find a good article by David uh, R. Jones, who's big, 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 you know, well-read, very masterful scholar of Enochian slash practitioner. So I'm not quite done inking this yet. You can see here I've made some smudges. So I made the mistake of saying, well, I'll go ahead and like keep on <laughs> carving. I'll do some initial inking and then I'll come. And then of course, you know, you can see right here, my hand is all smudged. So anyway, so so that's the next thing. Another thing I wanted to mention, let me see if I can find it here. One, okay, so I'll make another quick note here. And that is this cell. So you see the XE, it's kind of at the bottom of this SDA. This XE, this is actually the sigil for Horlun, is, which is one of the um, names around the seal. But I'm just going to like rotate this 180 degrees so you can see here again, it's the XE. But here is a cell called Y15. Now, this is important because in the original transmission of the SDA, uh, D wrote this down, John D wrote this down as Y over 15, over 14, excuse me. So you see here, that's why is this the case? Well, the Archangel Michael actually um, told him to correct this. And so he didn't, he, he had in the diary that Michael told him to correct it, but in the actual diagram, he didn't correct it. So it's just the way it goes, right? So let me just turn this around again and just sort of Sorry give about you, that. So turning this back around again and then just giving you a sense of like how this thing kind of works, right? So, for example, here's the number four. We'll start up here, and we'll just do an easy one here. So the number four of the letter T, what does this mean? Well, starting from, this is the beginning, right? The, point, the pentagram is pointing up, the heptagram is, uh, heptagon is pointing up, 
Hepti heptagram is pointing up, and it all ends with this one single continuous line here, right? And right here is the, this is actually not the letter W, it's the Greek letter, letter omega, indicating, su suggesting the letter, the end, right? So this would be then the beginning of this 40 cell ring about the entire uh, SDA and the outermost ring. So what does this mean? Well, this is kind of a neat little code that the angels transmitted. So sorry about that. So this four over the T means you count starting with me from here, one, two, three, four. So you get the letter H. So if you're keeping track, T, you know, I could write it down, but you know, we'll just go, actually, I'll write it down here. I happen to have a pen. So here is the letter, come on, T, and then capital T, and then lowercase h, right? So, okay, so I'm supposed to go clockwise, because that's the number four on top. One, two, three, four, and then the number 22, H, ugh, okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, H, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, one, two. Okay, so then we have, the this is the number 11 over the letter A, so I wrote down A right here. Okay, and then from A, where is it? Okay, 11, 11A. So I keep going because the letter number 11 is on top. So I keep going clockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, And now we have the letter A above the number five. Okay, so we'll write down the number, the letter A right here. And then A over five. Now, the thing is, because the A is on top of the number five, we go backwards. So one, two, three, four, five. And we have the letter O over the number 10. So come back here, write down the letter O. And go back 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And that's a T over the number 11. So write down the letter T. And I, I usually try to do this when I'm, just to make it a little easier to read and to not confuse it with a cross, but you get the idea here. So, the letter T over 11, da, 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 T over 11. So again, the T is over the, you know, it's upside down, but you can see backwards 11. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, And then we have the letter H, and there's no number associated with it. What does this mean? It means you stop. So the last, the name here is Theof, okay? So this is actually one of the angel names of the perimeter, basically, of this, uh, of this entire Sigillum de Ameth. Now, each of the seals here is associated with a different name. So this seal is G and each one of the seals always has a cross incorporated into the seal as, as well as the letter and then the number five. So this is actually Galas Githog Theoth, which is that one that I just did. It was the name given to it. And I'm not sure why there's sort of like this reversal. It makes me wonder if maybe there was like some kind of reversal in, in the transcription and the angel said, good enough, we can do stuff backwards. You know, we can, if you give us a, <laughs> a message in a mirror, we can read what it is, you know, no big deal. But so at any rate, Gallus Githog Theoth Horlin Inon Eoth Galithog. Okay. So it's kind of odd, right? Because if you actually spell it out, the G, the A, the L, you know, L30, basically, you can, with a little fly out of a, a circle and a cross here, you know, you have to go sort of rotate it to see it, but you get the idea. Okay. So what's odd about this is. So it, it, it doesn't make too much sense to me, but at any rate, so these are like special angel names, right? So kind of big things. So then going in, you have, you know, these this little initial seven angels listed here. And you do get some interesting numbers here. So you get the number, you're starting out here, basically, and that's the letter G and the number five. Five is the number of, of man, right? We have four you know, four limbs, you know, and a head, or, you know, whatever the case may be. Man, humanity, you get the idea. 
and we have five fingers to each hand, so it's kind of a thing. But what's interesting is that the angels then, you know, they did slight misspelling, you know, uh, striking of certain letters here and there. So I think Thales actually is just like five letters, but or six letters, excuse me, instead of seven here. It's initially given as seven, but they think they struck that. And it's, you know, angel's prerogative, as Donald, Mike, as uh, Lon Michael Duquette says. So, and what's interesting is the angels then gave these seals. And if you do the math, if you do that same thing, that same process, you wind up getting the name, uh, each of these seals winds up spelling the name Golly Thog, if you actually follow that same order, which is pretty cool. So this is the last angel name and there's no number here. So again, the exact same rules apply. Now, what I've done here, it, sh it should be relatively obvious why I didn't change these letters to Enochian letters, because if I did, then I would be messing up these seals, and I don't feel comfortable doing that. And it kind of works out okay, because that means I have two, you know, things, basically. You have the outer ring and then these inner, you know, arcs, basically. Chords, I suppose, C-H-O-R-D-S of uh, areas that are basically have within them a little seal and then a number, okay? Now within that is basically, it's hard to see here, but this is the letter Z for Zafkiel, which is one of the seven archangels in this angelic scheme. So you have the Z, Kef, which is the Enochian letter Z, and you have another kef here, and this is for Zadkiel. Okay, so this is Zafkiel, and if you actually go across, you go Z-A-P-H. So it's basically, if you start out at the beginning, you can actually draw like uh, seven by seven, you know, da 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 da, -da, -da. And Lon Milo Duquette goes into this. So look at that for further information. And then within this, so anyway, if you spell it all out, you eventually get to that, and you get 48 letters, so it's Zafkiel, Zadkiel, Kamael, K, I think in, uh, in Hebrew it's usually transliterated from the Hebrew as K-H-A-M-A-E-L, but instead here it's, it's spelled in the Enochian, so go ahead and make your jokes, but it's C-U-M-A-E-L, you know, Kamael, basically. Um, but at any rate, and then the other ones are... Uh, Michael, Raphael, uh, Haniel, and Gabriel. Okay, so Zafkiel, Zadkiel, Kamael, Raphael, Haniel, Mikael, Gabriel. So seven. And if you take all those letters in the spelling as given by the Enochian angels, you actually get 48 letters, and then you have this cross used to fill out the 49. So this heptagon is, each of these segments is subdivided into seven. So you get a nice 49 scheme here. So then within that, you get these uh, unpronounceable names of God, basically. And you can, you know, you can squeak by with some kind of pronunciation. But the real trick here is that these names of God are then split up and rearranged so that you get the letter S-A-A-I, and then this number here, this 21 over 8 with a dot underneath, that suggests a substitution when you, when it's sort of like semi-convenient. So sometimes it'll have a letter associated with it and sometimes not. And then I think this is letter eight with a dot underneath. It's been a while since I've made one of these. So I am still going from the book as it were. So obviously this is not completely lettered, but another thing here you'll notice is that there's crosses throughout this inner heptagram here. And this heptagram, by the way, um, I wish I could say that, oh, this is the first time it's ever done, but no, it's actually, a version of this actually appears, uh, and you can see it in the cover, most of the covers of the Swarm Book of Honorius the Mage, you can see that. But this is definitely an upgrade, okay? So the original version is nowhere near as sleek and, and badass as this, if I do say so myself. So this is just like a little taste of what this, of what this is, what it does. So each of these angels here, so you get the archangel names, I kind of probably glossed over that a little too much. So these are archangel names about the out in this outer heptagon. And then this inner heptagram, you get these angels, which are basically sons and daughters of light. And they go from, you know, one slash two letter names to two to three to four. You can't see that. Five. I mean, you can see it, but you can see it. 
but do you know it? <laughs> so four letters, five letters, etc. Sorry, that was for Tom Segura fans out there. I've seen him, but I don't know him. <laughs> anyway, uh, so anyway, you get to the inner thing here. So there's like, um, so you get these sons and daughters of light, and then you get these planet interplanetary angels. So you've got uh, basically one set of angels here with um, these seals, these special outer, you know, basically, I think Leach calls them, Aaron Leach calls them the angels of the perimeter, L-E-I-T-C-H. Uh, I do recommend his books. They're pretty good as far as being comprehensive and really, really great scholarship. Um, very, very, very thorough. You don't get more thorough than Aaron Leach. I'm just going to flat, flat out say that. Um, okay, so you've got these special angel names that are have their own seals that are derived from the perimeter, basically, this, this outer perimeter. Then you get the archangel names. Then you get these kind of interesting names of God, which are kind of basically codes, more or less. And then you have one, two, three, four, sons and daughters of light, and sons and sons of light, and daughters and daughters of light. So you get one, two, plus four is six, and then you get these inner uh, planetary names, which are also derived from the same table that these sons and daughters of light are, uh, are from. So that's kind of like the overview of this. And the other thing is, I should mention that this is this not only connects to the heptarchy, oh yeah, I was gonna try to find, there's something, there's like a B, let me find it here. Okay, so I can't really remember what that was, but you're gonna have to deal with that. So, okay, so how do I make this? Okay, and then yeah, one other thing on the back side of this, there is, <laughs> clearly I, I messed this up a little bit. Um, let me rotate it around so you can see it. Yeah, you get gonzo me. I'm not gonna get nice, clean, edited stuff. <laughs> you go to somebody else for that. Um, but hey, you know, you get you get you get in, you get your hands dirty, and get to see what it is. So this is the back, and this is basically the Enochian letters for Agla, uh, Enochian letter A, which is pronounced uh, un, then the Enochian letter G, which is Jed. And I haven't inked this, and there's a cross in the middle that I haven't completely inked at all. So uh, I made a slight error <laughs> when I put the letter names in. So I fixed those. Um, if you make a mistake with the with the wax, uh, my wife's recommendation uh, holds, which is to boil a spoon because the wax has a nice, a relatively low melting point. So you can make some quick, clean error, uh, error fixes like that. Okay, so technically you're supposed to be making um, not only this one, but an additional four miniature ones, which are all this size. And yes, I'm gonna do my best to make that. I have made um, versions of this where, and, and you can see the problem here is like, how do I fit all of this lettering into this thing? This is why people are getting <laughs> into 3D printing here. I have done this by hand. It is not easy. It is probably not that legible. And I sure as heck did not <laughs> ink those. Okay. Just, just flat out. But I did get the geometry and I was able to just get something kind of passably looking like letters and you know the angels you know we're, we're fine with that okay so enough of that nonsense so okay the next thing here is how do I do how did I go about doing this well I got myself a little um, a, a little nine inch pie tin and I sprayed some Pam in it and then I melted some beeswax some real natural beeswax in there uh, it's pretty nice and it's this version this to go around actually was really nice because the wax had a nice uh, honey smell so that smelled pretty good okay one second let me show you the last trick here okay so how did uh, how deep are you supposed to make it you are supposed to make it uh, one and three eighths of an inch deep so what I did here you probably cannot tell very well but what I did is I just marked it and I said okay let me put a certain amount of wax in there, and if I didn't have enough, I would put in a little bit more, and just waited until it was all melted. I do recommend doing, putting the tin, pie tin in a baking sheet, or if you are going to melt it, then at least wait until it is all completely cool. I'd, I'd say at least like an hour and a half, probably, to let it make sure it's relatively solid. And then, and I do recommend trying to make these during winter time, if you're in the south. Um, or if you're, you know, in the far enough north, then uh, taking it outside once it has cooled and just flipping this, you know, uh, pie tin upside down 
and then the wax will it, it, the wax will shrink ever so slightly as it cools and then it'll just pop right out you can just like put your hand in there and you know push in the middle and it, it usually will pop right out if it's not already out already at the end of the night i've just just from having from experience so so how did i start a, start going uh, about making this so you get the wax you can pull out the nice wax disc it looks something like this except nine inches use your imagination uh, insert your joke there <laughs> and then what i did is i printed out this nice template okay now there's a little smudge here because i've been inking but i printed out a template and you, you just look, search for a blank sda that's what you do and then what i did is you probably cannot tell here but you can see definitely see this spot in the middle i pushed a little push pin in the middle so if you get good at this and i'm not going to say i'm good but you know, if you get experience, let's put it that way, you could make a bunch of these, like you could probably make the, the amount of wax I, money I spent on wax for this. I got five pounds of wax for, for a relatively low amount. I think I want to say it's like, you know, $4 a pound, something like that, maybe less, maybe more. I don't remember, but five pounds was enough to make this big nine inch disc and then five of these. So here I'm gonna, I'm actually starting to carve in the round tablet of Nalvaj. And if you're making a single set, you would make four of these miniature discs and you can, if, if you're bold and you're, or, you know, <laughs> masochistic maybe, you can go ahead and try to carve in the, and there's just gonna be little specks at the bottom. And what I got is I got stainless steel this time I had tried an aluminum one, and what I found is that the aluminum, it wasn't quite as, um, it, it wasn't, it, for whatever reason, it, the, as I kept reusing it, it wound up sticking. So I got four stainless steel four inch um, tins, and then I just flipped them upside down overnight. And then if they were not uh, cooperative, I just took one of them. Let me. Well, I could find. I could show you. But basically, imagine a, sta a stainless steel one. I just went bang against this uh, concrete surface, and then eventually, I got just enough of this that I could slowly start to like, you know, you know, wiggle it out and take it out. So, okay. So you get the pie tin, or you get the little cake tins. You put it in there. You pop it out. And then you print out one of these and then you just put in push pins and i usually just try to find like little spots here like here you can see there's a little hole that i pushed in just to like guide me as i go along and I push you know put put in as many pins as you can okay i'm just going to flat out say that because you're going to need something mark mark to mark all this out but what will happen is you will see the definite pattern now when you're making carvings when you go to that level i do recommend using something like a straight edge this is a carving tool i bought when i first made it and it's held up pretty well um, so use something as, as a straight edge but what i recommend is going halfway across when you're making each of these lines don't go don't try to eyeball that okay because the main thing is you see how like these you sort of get this visual effect of things going over and under so if you go halfway across and then you turn and then halfway across here and then turn halfway, et cetera, et cetera. You won't wind up going, running over this and needing to like redo the wax, okay? You'll see, it'll be obvious like where this needs to, cause you go halfway here and then halfway here, there'll be a gap here and then it's obvious. Okay, then I, I just go to that line, okay? So just make a whole bunch of holes. Every single one of these, you know, little points where two line segments meet, just put a, put a push pin in there. Okay, just, you know, you can line it up pretty easily, just kind of eyeball it, say where's about is the middle, and you can tell just by looking at this outer rim here, and just bing, 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 just as many as you can. Okay, now the goal here is going to be for you to go straight up and down. You don't want to, like, have things going in at an angle, but pretty much, if you do all of that, you're going to have the pattern, right? And it's going to be, it's you can just use this as your guide to say, okay, how do I carve? Oh, okay, I'm going to look here. And it doesn't take that much, okay? And I am saying that, you know, very confidently, but of course I have experience. So if, if we were live, this would be even easier, right? So it'd be nice to do a little class like this, a little workshop, show you how to do it. But this is the best thing you're going to get because I have no time. <laughs> and I do it once instead of have to do it a million times. And for, you know, five minutes and then, you know, 
get it, answer emails. It's just way easier for me. <laughs> Let's face it, I try to work efficiently. So, okay, so you put all those in. And then I do recommend going with um, Lon Milo Duquette. He's really just done a great job showing how the rest of this is done, and you can review his stuff there. So, yeah, so this is just my quick-ish tutorial <laughs> on how to do that. I bought some, like, little wax things here, and then I did get a little uh, drip pen, and the, I got, like, a glass one. I lost the old one, but they're, like, six bucks you know, on, you know, the, the endangered river, <laughs> tropical rainforest store. Um, and I got a little, you know, inkwell, and, you know, it's not the best ink. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. This one. This is like, you know, if you if you, look, you can see the brand name, I don't recommend this one. Try to get something that is. I'm not sure what it is. Like what happens is it's kind of like goes in and it's a little like gluey almost. So I have to go in and re-ink it. Like you know, I have to ink it about two, maybe even three times to just make sure that there's a, a straight line. Because what'll happen is it like goes in and then the, it's like water shrinking almost. It's like or like a rubber band, it kind of shrink, snaps back, and so I have to put in more and more until finally the whole thing is, the whole line is covered. So, well, you know, I want it to look nice. <laughs> um, I usually, there, there is nowhere in the diaries that says you have to ink it, but let's face it, it looks really nice inked, right? It, it, everything pops, you can see absolutely everything. It helps if you don't smudge as much as I do. I never said I was, you know, not messy, but you can still see, okay, that's a cross. That's the Enochian letter I, and this is the weird thing that Cliff made up to combine the letters E and L. By the way, for those of you who are truly picky, I did not, I chose not to reverse. Um, Enochian is written uh, right to left. Uh, I chose not to because this was the order that it was shown. And the other reason, the major reason why is, if I did reverse, then I have to suddenly, instead of having everything go clockwise for these things that go around, you can't really see it too well unless I do this. So this is the letter, this is the angel uh, Zedekiel, and I would have to literally reverse that. And what, would, what that means is I would need to reverse this entire thing in order for the format to match. And then do I do I flip over the order here? And it's like, eh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm, the angels can read it backwards. I'm only gonna have them read individual names backwards. So anyway, you get the idea here. So that's my short <laughs> rundown. So anyway, you get the idea. It's not, it's not an overnight process. This is taking me longer. This was technically done. I could probably have gotten this done in like, it, just, the, just the nine inch one, just done in an afternoon. Um, I went ahead and just went a little bit longer. I wanted it to pop nice, to look nice for my friend. So anyway, um, if you have any questions about this or other parts, I know that the the thing I was trying to show you was there's a B446 something, or no, B4, four, B6, 6B, something like that uh, thing. In the, I believe it relates to the SDA, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's some other part. Uh, look up uh, David Jones. I think it's David R. Jones. Um, he's just uh, done some some really good work connecting the watchtowers. It might be on the esoteric archives. It might be um, it might be elsewhere. I can't think of where it is right now. But you you can find it. There's still a, there's like a lot of really good free stuff out there. Um, just sort of connecting certain dots about how this thing relates to the other thing, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, good luck. Uh, do, um, I do recommend, you know, making these, this is like the cheapest thing. So this is, this is the reason why I'm going over the SDA in particular. Um, if you are not a person of means, if you, you know, if you have just a, if, if you, if you are worried about affording rent, do not make this. Okay. If you have just enough and you are choosing to not go to a movie in order to make something, and it's a question of how many movies, first of all, you know, um, it, the main thing I would say here is like, this is this is the cheapest one. I, I If you can borrow baking stuff from other folks, pie tins, whatever, find a neighbor down the street, ask him if you can do that, or get on a, you know, word of mouth, just put, put that out there. And then Pam, baking or you know cooking spray grab that and then you're pretty much good to go that you know and then buy the wax and the wax is going to be the cost you know so technically if you have good neighbors 
and you have some push pins, all this, all this stuff, the initial stuff is, you know, 50 bucks maybe. If you already have the stuff, it's 25. Yeah, so uh, 25 bucks just for the wax. And then you're good to go. You know, I'm reusing the ink and me, I forgot the, the ink pen, but you know, 50, maybe 60 bucks nowadays, even with inflation. So uh, I do recommend trying to slowly, slowly build up your tools when it comes to doing Enochian, not because, you know, mainly because the angels were like, build these tools, do this thing to make it easier. You know, it's like, uh, you know, put it, put gas in the car, right? Or, um, or all of that sort of, you know, that sort of idea is like, you know, it's not to, because I'm being a pain in the ass, it's because you need the car to go. <laughs> you know, you imagine these angels trying to talk to us like, uh, I'm not doing it because I'm making a lot of work for you. I'm doing this so that you can do it safely. <laughs> so anyway, um, good luck with your SDAs. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, this is really pretty, It's first of all, it's beautiful to make it. And it's, you know, more or less, this is kind of what John Dee and Edward Kelly left behind. You can actually find a version of this in the British Museum because it's really relatively cheap. I know uh, John D had other stuff made for the watchtowers, but I don't think he actually made the watchtower tablets. So who knows? But anyway, um, okay, I'm going on long here. So SDA, the order, by the way, just really quickly in terms of what I recommend making, start with the SDA. It's cheap. It's wax. It, you know, wax, this has actually lasted a long time. Um, if you're using the miniatures and you're putting them under the table, just you can use risers or you can do what the angel said, which is to have like a six inch thing, uh, block and then blah, 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 blah. I just use regular plastic risers. You know, that's probably the, the only thing that I haven't done according to this, to the diaries. Um, even cheaper than that maybe would be the banners, but you do need different colored stuff. And so that might be a thing you could do uh, beyond that. So banners and or sigillum de ameth and then from there um, maybe the miniatures definitely the round tablet of Nelvage is another one that's pretty cheap and you could just make it as part of the your miniature sda sets because you know instead of having to make you know four of these you make five and then the fifth one you carve as i'm starting to do here and um yeah you're good to go i mean you're 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 you know, things, things are hopping. Um, and, you know, if you're working with a group, you know, then you can sort of think about getting a, you know, considering a shared expense on that. So the table is by far the hardest and most expensive thing to make. Um, so I do, I would say, you know, I would say you can probably get that done relatively well. I think the there's some debate about what kind of wood to make. I wound up using reclaimed deodar cedar um, because one of the ideas as well, of sweet wood, maybe that was cedars of Lebanon, but that's actually endangered now, relatively. So I got deodar cedar, same genus, and no problem there. And it was reclaimed, so I didn't feel bad about killing a tree. And it did smell sweet, it was nice. Um, but yeah, Cedars of Lebanon, that was probably used in the temple um, or definitely was used a lot. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful smell. Um, the Deodar version, I haven't smelled the Cedar of Lebanon, but at any rate. So let me think what else. So yeah, um, if you're gonna do that, uh, if, if you're gonna make the table, that's gonna be the, the most expensive thing just cause you gotta like get all of that done. And there, the, I know Aaron Leach has a version uh, how to make that in his you know essential Enochian grimoire pretty sure Lan Maya Duquette does too and yeah those are all just based on the angel kings and um princes from the heptarchy and then the laman is like the last is like one of the more expensive things they wanted that out of gold and you can use gold plating or gold vermeil and that's fine you know I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend getting the 24 karat gold thing. I know the angels were big on that, but it's too soft. It's going to get scuffed up really easily. I, I would say if you're going to do anything like that for as far as plating or as far as you know, if you're going to do solid gold, that's pretty expensive. But um, I would say 18 karat, you know, maybe even 14. Because 
because 24 is just it's impractical. Sorry, angels. <laughs> if you want it to last, right? And hey, this is an ongoing relationship. So, but the closer you get, if, you know, within reason and your budget, um, that's what I would recommend. And I don't know why. Um, it's sort of like um, the angels do appreciate the effort that you go to. Uh, I don't know how else to put that, but like, there's this line from the legend of. <laughs> no, I said keep this, keep the short right. Okay, I promise I'll stop with this. There's a. Uh, uh, line from the movie The Treasure of Sierra Madre, I think. It's got Bogart, I think, and uh, one of the Houston actors from that family. But anyway, I think it's John Houston. He's quoted and he's saying, you know, something along the lines of, you know, gold doesn't have any value except the effort that man that a man goes to digging it up. You know, a little sexist back in the day, but whatever. Um, but it's true, right? <laughs> like, other than it being, re like, really pretty and shiny... Uh, is it really worth it? Well, you know, it's got that real, it, it has a great look to it. Um, but why, so, you know, is it work for work's sake? No, but are you showing your dedication if you happen to go to that extra length? Yeah. So if you're going to a jeweler or you are a jeweler, you know, that is going to cost you, even if, even if you are a jeweler, you still need to spend the money on the gold. But you see this whole process here, right? Like you make the wax disc, you have to do this, you have to do that. And you're putting your labor and you're, you're basically attuning your consciousness to it. So, all right, I've gone long and I didn't intend to. Um, any questions, just let me know. Uh, email me or leave a comment. You know how it works. So I'm not gonna tell you to smash a bell. I'm not gonna tell you to like and subscribe. <laughs> If you like, you can like. If you want to subscribe, you can subscribe. But you know, I'm not here to to push um, to push. You know, getting a certain number of followers. It's like this. Is, I understand this is a niche thing. So it is cool. All right, I uh, love y'all. Talk to you later. Bye.